Hi everybody, it's Patricia Coglin, and I am responding to a request by a subscriber wondering how best to start ongoing sessions. We've talked about how to start that initial trial therapy, how to obtain an inquiry and proceed from there with the central dynamic sequence. But this subscriber was wondering, what's the best way to start ongoing sessions? Now, how you're gonna approach this has everything to do with your why. So you need to be really clear about why you're doing the kind of work you're doing. Now, I do very intensive um, emotion-focused therapy, the aim of which is to get to the unconscious source of the patient's symptoms and suffering. So given that, I'm going to make room for the unconscious to speak. Um, if you are a behavior therapist, right, and you've maybe given homework, you're going to start by following up on that. But in dynamic psychotherapy, we want to let the dynamics become clear. So after that first session in which we're asking, what are the difficulties? Why are you here? We generally don't start the ongoing sessions. In that trial therapy, hopefully we have come to agreement what we are there to address, uh, what kinds of goals the patient has, and hopefully we've also agreed on the therapeutic task. And so we expect the patient to get to work and to come in with important material. So we want to make room for that. And we don't start. Um, even though many, many uh, of my trainees have been taught uh, to take on that responsibility, first of all, and to start the session. And second of all, to do so by asking the conscious, rational mind, what do you want to talk about today? And this not only makes no sense if your why is to get to the unconscious source of difficulties, but it's actually antithetical to that because number one, you're taking charge. Number two, you're behaving as if you didn't already have agreement about what you're there to do and what the difficulties are. And three, you are engaging the conscious rational mind. And that's not what we want to do. So I would recommend you show up, you be open and receptive, and you wait and you wait for the patient to begin. Um, if they don't, I mean, whatever they do, again, is dynamic information for you. And as soon as possible, you're gonna be putting the person on both triangles. So if they come in and say, oh my gosh, you know, I, you know we've been talking about um, you know, how I go weepy and helpless in the face of my anger. I had a great example of that last week. So they're gonna start right away. Um, or they're going to come in either talking about or in some nonverbal way signaling that they're very anxious. So if the patient doesn't begin the session and you feel like you need to ask a question, uh, in dynamic psychotherapy what I would ask was, I wonder what you're feeling right now as we come together for this session. So they're either going to tell you about some emotions coming up or they're gonna reveal that they're anxious, uncomfortable, nervous. Um, and again, in both cases, that's gonna be in the transference. It's something happening right now, or they're gonna be in a shutdown, withdrawn state, more on the defense pole. So you're gonna be able, again, to assess very quickly where the person is on both of those triangles. And since we know we wanna to get to the bottom of both to feelings, uh, from the past that are getting played out in the current, you know, we'd ask again, I wonder what you're feeling about being here today, and you'll go from there. I mean, whatever the person responds uh, will be perfect, and hopefully you are keeping in mind what you've already agreed upon, and you've got a case formulation, right? Is this person quite passive and subservient? Do they tend to wait for others to take the lead and simply respond, either complying or defying? If so, even more reason, not yourself to begin the session. 
Um, and if they sit there silently, you know, and you say, gee, you know, it seems like you're waiting for me to start. Isn't that the very pattern you talked about that gets you into all kinds of trouble? Is that what you want to do, right? Or you want to take charge here? And, you know, it is their therapy. And we're certainly um, expecting people to take responsibility on their end, right? And to follow up with what you've been working on. And if that doesn't happen, again, you're either in defense or resistance or the person is overwhelmed with anxiety. So I hope this answers the question. Again, what you do and how you do it really need to be connected to your why you're doing what you're doing, right? So there's no pat answer uh, in every case, but it needs to be case specific. So uh, I look forward to your comments. Bye-bye.